Hi, everyone. Um, we wanted to go ahead and take a moment and welcome you to new student orientation here at Central Penn. Um, we are thrilled to have you with us this evening. We have put together an agenda to help make this adventure of going back to school feel a little less overwhelming and provide you a foundation to ease you into your studies week one to feel confident and prepared. We have arranged a lineup of speakers, panelists, as well as some breakout sessions to allow for a smaller, more intimate session where you can ask some questions and interact with individuals from various departments that you will interact with as a student at the college. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping items here before we get started. Wanted to make sure everyone was aware. Um, we do have the participants muted so that there's not a lot of extra noise and feedback while we have um, individuals presenting and answering questions, but you are able to put questions in the comments for the chat and we'll certainly be sure um, to respond to you or get that question answered. Once we get to the breakout sessions, we will be unmuting, allowing you to unmute yourself so you can speak with the individuals in those various breakouts. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what those options are when we get a little closer to that time. Um, to go ahead and get us started, I wanted to introduce um, from our academics department, uh, Karen Hurst, who's our Dean of the School of Continuing Education, and Janet Bixler, our Director of First Year Experience. And they're going to go ahead and get started with us. Hi, everybody. I'm Janet Bixler, Director of First Year Experience. And my goal is to help you have a successful first year at Central Penn College. As a new Central Penn College Knight, you should feel free to reach out to me if you have any type of question, whether it be academic, counseling or personal, or school spirit. And I can connect you with resources and I can guide you toward activities that will help make your life as a CPC Knight more meaningful, more purposeful, and fun. So hopefully I will get to meet you in person maybe, or hopefully virtually, through different small groups. And now, Karen Hurst, the Dean of Continuing Education. Thank you, Janet. And thank you, Melissa, for introducing um, this portion. I am so happy to be here and I hope that it's coming through okay. It's always so difficult, this format, isn't it? But um, I am grateful to be here tonight and I'm grateful to have all of you here. There's so many of you, I'm very excited. I am the Dean of Continuing Education and um, let's just pause there for a minute and say, what in the world is that? Because that is a brand new thing. Um, we've only had it for one term here at this college. The School of Continuing Education houses the program certificates and corporate education. But best of all for me, it is also um, one of the purposes of it being created is to help and serve students just like you. Continuing education students all have a story to tell. Each of you has a unique circumstance that led you to where you are today. Maybe you're transferring in some credits, looking for a better career path. Maybe you're coming back to school after a very long time, or maybe it's the brand new experience for you and you're just starting a little bit later than traditional age. Most of you have responsibilities outside of school. Life <laughs> is a big responsibility. I'm sure you have work and family responsibilities as well. And this can be really challenging when you add college into the mix. And maybe I should rephrase that. This will be really challenging as you add college into the mix, but I want you to know that it's not impossible and that we are here to help you. But let me just clear up a misconception that many students have. A lot of times continuing ed students feel like they're kind of on the fringes of the student body. But I want you to know that you are Central Penn. You make up 78% of the student body of Central Penn students. Continuing education is very important to us and you matter. And because of that, we've created this whole new school, the School of Continuing Education, because we want you to succeed. We want you to reach your goals and we want to help. My um, school, which right now just has a couple of people in it, as far as uh, workers, we are going to be reaching out to you and contacting you. Hopefully, you'll have time to have a virtual meeting with us. But if not, hopefully, you'll just have time to answer an email, something like that, so that we can share in your struggles. We want to know about your joys 
your struggles, your frustrations, your accomplishments, and if there are some barriers that we can help you overcome. You might not remember my name, um, I'm Karen Hurst, but you can email me at Dean of Continuing Education at centralpen.edu. So if you just think of continuing education, slap a Dean of in front of it, you can email me with any questions that you have as you start this path. Um, I want to take a couple of minutes to let you know what the academic term will look like for winter of 2021. This last year has been a lot of ups and downs in any, any aspect of your life, right? So what is school going to look like? Well, we know that classes start January 4th, but for the first two weeks, that's until January 18th, all in-person classes will be held remotely, virtually, just kind of like we're doing right now. Tuesday, January 19th, <clears throat> excuse me, the 18th is a holiday. So starting on the 19th, in-person classes will be held at the regular time that they were scheduled for. So right now what's important is to know, did you sign up for an online class, a daytime class or an evening class? And sometimes students get mixed up about those. So check with your advisor, email me your schedule, whatever you need to do, find out what modality, that's what we call it, what kind of classes you're taking. Your online classes will meet online, always, the whole term. It will be exactly the same. So you don't have to worry about that. You'll be able to log in and see your classes. But if you have a daytime class, that same time slot, let's say it's a 9 a.m. class, that's the time you'll be meeting virtually for those first two weeks. So your time commitment will be consistent throughout the whole term. If you have a Wednesday night class, you'll have a Wednesday night virtual class for those first two weeks. Hopefully that will help you to get used to that schedule and help you have your learning hat on at those times of day. If you're in an online class and you're gonna stay in this online class the whole term, just remember to email your professor if you have any questions. That goes um, for the other kinds of classes as well. I've been a, a math professor here at Central Penn for about six years. And I'm always really happy to answer those kind of questions mostly because it helps students set them up for success for the whole term. If they just ask one or two questions at the first part of the term, maybe it sets the tone for the whole thing. They just need to figure out a couple of things, maybe how to navigate Blackboard a little bit or when assignments were due or just some small thing. So please ask questions. If you don't get a reply from your professor in 24 or 48 hours, email me. And I will see if I can help or I will bug your professor. I know almost all the professors on campus. Um, it's important that you stay in touch though, especially as this is a changing environment. Right now we're talking about two weeks remote and we're hoping that that's what it's going to be. But there are just unknowns right now with um, the coronavirus. About a term or two ago, all classes made their courses visible through Blackboard one week before classes started. This is called week zero. You don't have to even log in during week zero, but if you wanted to, to make sure you could log into your class and just to see what it's like, that is available for you. All classes, online, evening, daytime, all classes have a week zero now. And I think that's a good way for you just to get into Blackboard and see what it's like a little bit. Um, it's important to log in as soon as you can with your classes. Sometimes there's assignments even the first week. I know, how dare we really, right? But there are assignments sometimes that first week. We only have 11 weeks. And so if you don't log in at the very beginning of the week, you might feel like you're already behind. And that is not a very good feeling. You feel overwhelmed in life anyway. Um, it's not good to add the overwhelm of being a little bit late on top of that mix. I have a personal reason for feeling so strongly about supporting you as continuing education students. I returned to college when the youngest of my three children started high school. I had gone to school all the time. When I was young, after I got married, every town we lived in, I took a little bit of college. So I pulled all my credits together uh, when my youngest started high school and I went back to get my bachelor's degree. And I worked on that while she got a job. Um, she graduated, she started college, got married, she moved away. I had a job, my first probably real job because I had a degree. Um, and then I started working on my master's degree while I was working. So I understand what it's like. 
you get so tired and there's just so many responsibilities. At the same time I was doing this, I have a very dear sister that lives in California. She went back to college about the same time to become a nurse. So we could use each other as a support system. And we would talk about how tired we were, how we didn't know what we were gonna fix for dinner, how we didn't want to do any more laundry, all those kind of silly things, our frustrations. But we also could share, hey, I got an A on that paper, or I took a really hard test and I got a B, I didn't think I would. We could share some of those triumphs. And that became my support group. I understand that it is, and it will be tough for you to stay focused. I hope that each of you can develop a group of supports. I hope that you reach out to the School of Continuing Education and to first year experience and to all those people you'll hear from today and reach out to them to be part of your support group. It can make a big difference. We're here to help you. You'll hear from a lot of these dedicated professionals in the program tonight and they're behind you and ready to help. Sometimes we just don't know the issues you're facing though. So please be open and let us know so we can help. Once we're meeting on campus again, a little bit more in person, I'd love for you to stop by my office. Uh, my office is in the main campus, uh, that main building on main campus, ATEC building, room 203. Email me, I'll give you directions. But it'd be great to sit down and just get to know some of you and figure out um, what you've gotten yourself involved in, right? And I'd love to hear some of your goals. The first two weeks of every term are daunting. I just want to tell you that. Those first two weeks, you will feel overwhelmed. I, every term I started, I felt overwhelmed. You would go into each class and they would tell you everything you had to do for the whole term. Oh my goodness, too much. All the projects that you had to do, all the papers you had to write, all the homework assignments. It was just very much. But remember, you only have to do one day at a time. That's just an overview. Just let that slide off your back and get to work. You are here for some reason. I'm sure all of you have a different reason for being here. Something that is your motivation. Keep that in mind, remember that, and then let us help you to attain those goals. You'll soon find a schedule that works for you. And you all have so many responsibilities, but we're here to help you with this one. Keep your goals and your purpose in mind and remember, you're not at all in this alone. You have a big team behind you. Just reach out when you need help. I just wish you the best of luck. It's an exciting adventure. It's your own personal education journey, and I wish you the best of luck in it. Great to see you. I hope to see you sometime face to face a little bit more. I'm going to scroll through all the pictures after I finish talking so I can get to know you just a little bit. But I want to turn the time back over to Melissa Mahoney. Thank you, Karen. Um, so I did want to encourage you, if you have a webcam and you'd like to share your photo, please feel free to show video. Um, most of us are at home. We know you're at home. We're not expecting you to be in some sort of fancy office. So uh, we'd love to see your faces if you feel comfortable with that. Um, but I just wanted to welcome you to turn on your webcams if you'd like. Um, if not, no worries. That's just fine. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our panelist discussion. Um, I wanted to go ahead and just introduce you to our the members of our panel. Um, these are individuals that you're going to most likely either request to meet with, speak with, or may come across in various uh, ways throughout your college education in this journey. Um, so first, I in, if you could, if I'm announcing, if you could just give a little wave, maybe say hello so your picture pops up. I mean, everyone can see you. Um, in our advising department, we do have Caitlin Kovas, who is our Director of Student Advising. Hey everyone, I'm Caitlin. We'll be hearing from Steve Hassinger, Dean of Career Services and Development from our Career Services Department. Hi everybody, looking forward to speaking with you. In counseling, we have John Ashman, who is our counseling intern. Hello everyone. Megan Peterson, our Dean of Equity and Multicultural Affairs, will be discussing various diversity um, questions and information with you this afternoon. Um, for Blackboard, Kim Bateman, our LMS administrator, is with us to answer questions as well. Hey, everyone. Megan Kaiser, Director of Learning Center. She's here to represent the Learning Center this evening. 
And we have Adrian Thoman, Dean of Student Engagement, um, representing our Student Services Department this evening. Hi, everybody. Look forward to meeting you all. So as we move forward this evening, um, we're going to go ahead and um, ask some of the questions that have been submitted already um, to our panel. Um, and our panelists are going to go ahead and answer those questions and interact um, in that way. Please feel free to use the chat, um, which is um, available to you to go ahead and ask any questions that you may have. Um, we will certainly go ahead and um, you know answer those questions um, and uh, you know field those as we wrap up. Um, after we finish up with the panel, I want to introduce to you our admissions department, just so you can kind of get a face with the name. I know a lot of you have been talking to our admissions department as well, and then we'll go on to our breakout sessions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with some of our questions this evening. Let me go ahead and get those in front of me. All right. So the first question I have is for the advising department. Um, so Caitlin, how can a student find who their advisor is? How do students learn how to schedule classes? And what all should students know about regarding, um, know about ordering books? Yeah, great question. So, um, so first off, if you are starting your first term, as I, you all are, uh, your advisor has not been assigned yet. Um, we assign advisors going into the first week. So by the first day of class, if you are registered for classes, you should see your advisor in the student portal, by, again, by the first day of class. So the way you can figure out who your advisor is, is you'll log into our student portal. If you haven't been there before, you're going to go to my.centralpen.edu, which is our single sign-on system, which I'm sure you'll be hearing more about. And you'll log in and click the student portal tile. And then in the top right corner, there is a little window that says advisor and your advisor's name is located there. If you do happen to still be finishing up any of your financial aid or anything like that, and you're getting scheduled during the first week of class, you'll be assigned an advisor within a day of being scheduled for classes. Um, so as far as registering for your classes, uh, so your first term, um, I know many of you already know this, but you are registered for classes by someone in the advising office or by our registrar. Um, so we just want to kind of take some of the mystery out of it for your first term, make sure it's not too confusing and that you get into the right classes. Um, but you will be registering for your own classes for your second term and beyond. If you are a brand new college student with no previous experience in college, one of the classes that you'll be taking is our CPC Foundations, which is a first year seminar type course. And that course is gonna go over a lot of different things, but one of the things that's covered in that course is course, registra is course registration. So uh, during the course of that class, you will be learning how to register for courses. Now, if you uh, are a transfer student and you've already attended another college, we know course registration, you might not need quite as much information. So, um, so you are still absolutely welcome to reach out to your advisor. Um, and we are definitely here to help you with the course registration process. So whether you have questions about what classes you should be taking, or you kind of have figured out what classes you wanna take, but you have questions about the system, um, we're here to answer any and all of those questions. Uh, we have a super easy way that you can schedule an appointment with an advisor um, with our online booking system, and we can go over that personally with you. Or we also do a virtual drop-in hour, so you can log in during those open sessions and speak with someone uh, who's familiar with course registration. And then uh, you also asked about ordering books. So yeah, ordering books, really important. Definitely wanna make sure you've got that uh, on your agenda. If you haven't already ordered your books, make sure to do that as soon as you can. Um, so I would say start with the Central Penn online bookstore. Our bookstore is all online. There's no physical bookstore to come visit on campus. So you're gonna wanna go online to our bookstore. And then if you go through the bookstore and you enter what classes you're gonna be taking in the winter term, then it'll tell you exactly which textbooks you need. You do have some, we do have some courses at Central Penn, particularly in our business department, but uh, there are some other classes as well. And it's not every business class where we have something we call inclusive textbook access, which means that you have already paid a textbook fee as a part of your bill. And so you do not need to go out and purchase an additional textbook. You'll be able to access your book through your course through Blackboard. So you don't need to buy a book for those courses. 
And if you are in a course with that inclusive access, you will see that it says in the bookstore that you do not need to purchase a book if you indicate that you're registered for that class. For the courses where you do need to purchase a book, uh, you'll see that there's different options and you can pick what works for you. Some, uh, some classes you might just have one option. Some classes you might be able to pick from a rental or a used book or an ebook. And so you can figure out what works best for your learning style and then order those right through the bookstore. Thank you, Caitlin. Hey, just a follow up. Um, one question that had come through was regarding their Blackboard account and how prior to starting classes, right now it's saying they're not currently enrolled within Blackboard, but they've been getting registration emails and they know that they're registered. So they're just curious when that might show up if you happen to know that, if you could answer that question. Great question. So as you just heard uh, from Dean Hurst, we have week zero, which is when you can start to access your class information. So that is when you'll actually see the classes listed. So you're right, you can't see the classes that you're taking in winter in Blackboard right now, but you can access your course schedule through the student portal. So if you go to the student portal and you go to My Academics and then Class Schedule, you can see your courses there so that you can confirm that you're in classes that make sense to you and by the way, if you are registered for a class and you're not quite sure what it is or why, or you're like, that doesn't really work for me, please let us know. We can absolutely help you figure that out. Uh, email advisingcenter at centralpen.edu and we can answer any questions you have about your winter schedule. Um, but yeah, so you can access your class schedule right now through the student portal. And then starting next Monday at the start of that week zero on December 28th, that's when you'll see your courses listed on Blackboard. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, our next question um, is for our student services department. Um, Adrian, can you talk about some of the fan favorite events and programs that students can participate in on and off campus? Tell us a little bit more about what some of the clubs are and just other ways that students who are continuing education students could get involved on campus. Absolutely, so we have an engagement team here on campus. And you know, when we heard Dean Hurst in the beginning, she talked about how she was able to connect with her sister and they were able to commiserate about school and what they had to do. Um, my part of what, what I do along with our amazing engagement team is to help give you opportunities to find those people to commiserate with. So whether it's a new classmate or a friend or a club member or faculty or the amazing resources through our student services offices, we try to connect you to those places. So we do them in a lot of different ways. Some of them are fun, like bingo. Uh, we have a virtual bingo right now. We're doing lots of virtual programming because of, you know, COVID. So we have uh, virtual bingo and fitness classes and mindfulness moments and guest speakers and uh, all kinds of different things. We also have clubs on campus. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, ah, you know, I've got all these things to do. I'm gonna have class and homework. Why would I wanna be in a club? Um, one of the greatest things that I, that I think is kind of neat is that students that get involved, actually studies show they get better grades. They do better in their classes because they have that connection. Plus, a lot of our clubs give you real world experience, so you're able to network in those fields that you are working to get into. You're able to get things to build your portfolio, your resume, maybe community service hours, which some of our programs require. So lots of great opportunities there. You are going to get, probably, um, as soon as you get started here, you're going to start getting these lovely weekly emails from me um, to have our weekly activities calendar. That's the best way to find out about stuff. You can also always message me. I'm happy to tell you what's going on and try to find something that's a good fit for you. If you have kiddos, we have a Facebook group called Nights with Tykes where you can meet other parents also trying to balance the demands of classwork and kiddos at the same time. So connect with us there. Um, yeah, and, and those are kind of the quick basics, but I'm really happy to talk to you more, answer any other specific questions that you have. Awesome. Thanks, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Um, now something that's pretty important that we're going to use a good bit is some information about our Blackboard system, which is our, um, learning management system that we use for our online classes, as well as our on-ground students use it for various submissions of um, work and on snow days and you'll get to use it a good bit. So um, we have Kim Bateman who's going to talk a little bit about Blackboard, how students log in, 
Um, and just how they find their, their schedule, their classes, their assignments, just give us a, a little bit of an overview to help us feel a little less, maybe just nervous about the unknown as we move forward. Okay, sounds good, Melissa. I'm going to share my screen. I have some screenshots here just so people can see what some of this is going to look like. So let me see here. Uh, okay. You know what we can do, Kim, while you're playing with that? Do you want me yeah. to move on to the next panelist so you can play? Sure. Go ahead and let me see if I can get this pop yeah. Start sharing, great. We're up, we're running, but we can go ahead and uh, and talk to um, the counseling department. I wanted to go ahead and ask uh, John Ashman, can you talk a little bit um, just about the no cost counseling services available? You know, how yeah, does absolutely. Yeah, how does your department help students adjust to life in college? What are some of the services you offer, and you know, how can students maybe schedule an appointment or get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. Those are all good questions. So to start off, um, the Counseling Center is made up of myself and my supervisor, Tom. We are both mental health professionals, and we're here to provide free and confidential counseling to any and all, student at, any and all students at Central Penn. So we know that there is a lot happening in the world right now, and that also means that there's a lot happening in the lives of our students. And there's a lot happening in the lives of just about everyone in this room. So for all of y'all who are transitioning into Central Pen, we're here to provide guidance, emotional support, and um, just a shoulder to lean on for any student that's having a mental health concern or for anyone who just wants to talk. Um, Y'all are able to come in and see us for any reason. Sometimes that could be that you might be feeling anxious or depressed. Other times it could be relationship difficulties or even unexpected life events. So regardless of the reason, as long as you're enrolled at Central Penn, you will have access to the Counseling Center for no cost, meaning that you've already paid for it with your tuition. It's also confidential. So that means that whatever you talk with Tom or myself about in session stays in the counseling center and it's not available to the remainder of the college. Now, Tom and I, we work to ensure that anyone who comes to see us feels heard, safe, and develops new toolkits and skill sets to better navigate their time here at Central Penn College. So right now, we're available through what's called telehealth. And that is either through video chat on a secure service that Tom and I have or over the phone call. And that will allow us to connect with any students within the state of PA. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the link to our webpage as well as our email, um, just so you can reach out to us if you ever need to talk. Um, other than that, all I can say is welcome to Central Penn and I look forward to getting to know y'all. Thank you, John. Uh, Kim. Are we up and running? Let me see here. Are we good? We are, we can see you now. Thank Wonderful, you. okay. So uh, we talked about Blackboard and how we can get into Blackboard, what Blackboard is. So Blackboard is our learning management system. This is where your courses live. Um, your faculty are going to put all kinds of wonderful information for, the, for you there regardless of whether you're doing your class fully online, blended, which is a combination of the two, or even our on-ground classes. Your faculty may put information there for you. You'll have your grades there. Um, you'll have information about how to contact your instructor. Uh, your syllabus, which is your contract for the course, it will tell you things like what this course is about, um, different resources you might need. So all of that's going to be housed in Blackboard. So Blackboard is our learning ma management system. And I think one of the things you asked about specifically was assignments. This is one of the places where you may find assignments. Um, certainly for online and blended, for on ground, you may have some things you'll do just in the class, but other than that, your assignments will be here in Blackboard. Okay. Um, so how do you get into Blackboard? I think Caitlin mentioned that we have a single sign-on system, which is really nice. You only have to remember one place to go, just my.centralpen.edu, log into that website, and then you'll see a series of tiles that will get you into different systems. 
So there's one here for Blackboard. There's also for your student email, something called the student portal, which I think Caitlin mentioned that too, that that's where you're going to go to find things like your schedule. Uh, we have Office 365 CP Alert, which is important too. Any of these things that you need to get access to, one of the most important things to remember though, is if you need help, just contact the help desk. We have wonderful people in the IT department who can assist you with any of these different things that you're trying to figure out as you're getting started with your classes. Um, the student portal. One of the questions was, where can you find your schedule? So that's one of the things that you can find here. It's also where you'll go to register for classes. You'll find your midterm and your final course grades here. You can check your account and other financial information, submit forms. There's also a virtual comment box. So Blackboard is your day-to-day -day interacting with your courses. The student portal is kind of the, the other things that you might need to do related to being a student. And then your schedule specifically to find that, if you go into the student portal and look for My Academics, once you open up My Academics, you'll be able to see my class schedule. And then while you can view this on the screen, the nice way to do this is to come up here and click on Schedule Report. And you can pull that up and print it out so that you have a nice copy of your schedule with all the information about your classes and where and how they meet. Um, Blackboard, if you click on that Blackboard tile, you're going to see something like this. And one of the questions was, where can you find your courses? You're going to look for this My Courses block. Now with My Courses, you're not going to see your courses there until December 28th, which is the beginning of week zero. So you won't actually be doing any assignments or anything in your courses then, but you will have access to them. So you can go in and find out about your professor, find out about what they have to say about the course, um, find out what resources you need. So take advantage of that week, week zero to get in and just interact with your courses and make sure you know what else going on there. Um, also in this My Courses block, you'll see Blackboard orientation. So if you're wondering, you know, oh, okay, so we've got Blackboard, but how do I know how to use it? Go in and click on the Blackboard orientation course, which you should have access to now, and you can learn about Blackboard. Uh, the orientation course will tell you how to get started at the college, will tell you about using your email and Office 365. It lets you walk through how to use a discussion board, assignments, practice using um, tests and quizzes within Blackboard, and shows you how to check your grades, which is really important. Uh, there's also help and other resources there, and it will walk you through a little bit of course registration. Also, at the top of the screen in Blackboard, you'll see all of these different things across the top. Uh, My Blackboard, Student Resources, Career Services. This is all wonderful information that's there for you to access. Um, notice too that there are submenus here. For example, if you go to student resources, then you can also click to find out all about the learning center and the resources that are available there. So while you have some time before classes start, check out all of those tabs and find out about the wonderful ways that we can support you as a student. We do have a Blackboard app available. So in addition to being able to access Blackboard through a computer, you can access it through a mobile device. Now this is great to be able to keep up with classes, but don't plan on taking an entire course using your phone. You really do need to use a computer. Um, and speaking of that, we do have labs on campus. So if you ever have issues with your own computer, you can come to campus. We have the Night Owl Lab in the Bollinger Building, which is open 24 seven. I just want to mention this wasn't part of the questions, but you do have free Microsoft Office available, so be sure to take advantage of that. You have one terabyte of cloud storage on OneDrive along with that, so don't go out buying any Microsoft Office or signing up for a monthly subscription. You can get all that through your accounts at Blackboard, and we can talk more about that individually later if you have questions about how to access it. And then lastly, I just want to remind you that we do have assistance available. 
So please get in touch with the help desk if we can help you with your technology at all, or check out those tabs in Blackboard for all of the other people we have available to help you. And welcome to Central Penn. Thank you, Kim. Um, so next up, let's see here what we have in our questions. I have a question for Megan Peterson in Equity and Multicultural Affairs. <clears throat> and the question is, what are the types of accommodations that can be made for students? And what are some of the reasons students might come to your office, the Office of uh, Equity and Multicultural Affairs? Sure. Well, I'm going to start with the second part of the question of why might a student come to the Center for Equity and Multicultural Affairs? So there are kind of four functions within the Center for Equity. So we have our disability support services, which I'll get into in a moment with that accommodation question, which is a really great, great question. Um, there's also multicultural affairs. So for students that are interested in expanding their global competency, um, getting involved with multicultural clubs and programming, um, they might come to the Center for Diversity, which we have on campus to get involved with um, the Center for Equity and Multicultural Affairs in that way. Um, other reasons students might come to the office is we have um, our Title IX services are housed in the Center for Equity. So for students that um, maybe are pregnant students, have questions about the supports that are available to them. For our new parents, um, if a student or their partner just had a baby or just um, adopted a child um, and they've got questions and need some support services, that might be a reason why students come to my office. Um, student rights and responsibilities um, is another area housed in the Center for Equity. So if a student has a concern and they're not entirely sure how to go about resolving it or if they need uh, help with a grievance or just help resolving a complaint, uh, my office would be the office that would walk them through that process and help them get their concern resolved. But in terms of disability support services, um, we offer all sorts of accommodations. So any student that has a documented disability um, is likely eligible for accommodations. Um, and disabilities can be really wide ranging. So there can be physical mobility, such as um, vision impairments or being hard of hearing or mobility impairments. Um, but disabilities could also be um, the result of a traumatic brain injury. They could be a psychological disability, such as PTSD or anxiety or depression. There's all sorts of different reasons why students may need accommodations um, and disability support services would work with them, um, regardless of the type of disability that they might have. So the most common types of um, accommodation requests that we see by far are related to um, taking tests. So whether that be getting extra time on tests, making sure that a test can be taken in a um, quiet and private space, um, maybe having those test questions read aloud by a proctor, um, anything like that we can work with students on. We do have um, a testing center on campus. Um, so for students that do have approved testing accommodations that we have a space on campus where they can come and take their tests. Um, we also work with students that may have assistive technology needs, such as getting access to textbooks in an audiobook format um, or having um, recorders to record lectures, getting access to PowerPoint or lecture notes. Um, there's all sorts of different things that we could work with students on. Uh, we also work with students who uh, may need um, to use a service or support animal. Um, so for support animals, those are kind of restricted to our residential population, but for students that use a service animal, they would work with my office um, to get their service animal registered. Um, I'll give you your fun fact for the day. A service animal can only be two types of animals. Um, so most, most people know that dogs can be service animals, but the other type of service animal is a miniature horse. So there's your fun fact for the day. Only two types of service animals are dogs and miniature horses. Um, but if um, if anybody is seeking accommodations, I encourage you to reach out. Um, I'll put my contact information in the chat, um, but we have a really simple application packet. It's just um, a couple pages long. Get some basic information. You submit that packet along with um, documentation of disability and recommendations from your provider. Um, and that's what we use to create a letter of approved accommodation, um, which can then be shared with faculty or staff offices. I know my office will often work with the Learning Center if students give permission for their accommodation letter to be shared so we can really tailor um, learning um, and tutoring services to that student's needs. So I certainly encourage you if you're thinking that you might be seeking accommodations to reach out to my office sooner rather than later so we can get that letter in place for you. Thank you, Megan. Um, while we were chatting about that, we did have a couple questions come in. So I just wanted to 
address the one. I, I see Kim Bateman did talk about some of the Blackboard questions that had come up in the chat. So if you were still un unsure about Blackboard or had additional questions about creating the account and things like that, she did answer some questions over in the chat. Um, but one of the questions was just, you know, in regard to our student population who perhaps isn't going to be on ground or even those who will be but haven't had a student tour or a campus tour yet. Um, right now, we're not uh, offering student tours just because of COVID and the precautions that we've put in place. Um, but we do have a virtual tour option. So perhaps when we send out um, the recording of this meeting, we can send a link um, with that virtual tour information so everyone can kind of see around and where various um, support services are located. So just to answer that, um, I'm sure there's a few of you that are wondering, where can I locate these offices or how will I find these people? Um, we can go ahead and share that, that uh, virtual information with you after the meeting. Okay. All right, so let's just move on here. I do have a question for career services. So um, Dean Hassinger, um, we have this 90.6% graduate success rate. And a lot of our students have heard about that because admissions does talk a, a little bit about that through the admissions process and when we do speak with students. Can you talk to the audience a little bit about why that number is really important to the college, to students, and when can students ultimately um, begin to work with you in the Career Service Center? Absolutely, I'm happy to, because I love that success rate number. Um, so when we're looking at that number, we're not looking at just did people graduate and get jobs. I'm gonna guess that probably 90% of the people who are on here with us tonight already have a job, right? I'm guessing that many of you are here because you want something more out of your career. So we do a one-year graduate follow-up survey with all of our graduates and we find out where they're working. What's their job title? What's the name of the company? What city and state are they list are they um, located in? And we make that public. We put it right out on our website. Um, we can share that information with you. So if you want to know, hey, I'm coming into a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I wonder where criminal justice students are getting jobs. We have reports and we can actually show you that. Many colleges will report um, a percentage, 97%, 98% of their graduates got jobs. But as I said, we know that most of you already have jobs. So that number for us represents not just jobs, but jobs in your chosen field of study at Central Penn or continuing your education. Because sometimes people finish their associate degree and they go right into a bachelor's degree or bachelor's degree and they go into a master's degree program. Um, so 90.6% of the graduates in our most recent report, and these will be graduates from the class of 2019, uh, were working in their chosen field or continuing their education within one year of graduation. When can you get to know us in career services and work with us in career services? Right now, from day one. Um, we even work with prospective students because sometimes we have prospective students who aren't quite sure what major is the right fit for them or they know what major they want, but they don't know what they wanna do with that major. They're not sure what the kind of career opportunities are that might be available to them. So we encourage you to get involved with us early on. One thing I will tell you is that in your programs, you're going to have to do either an internship or a capstone project as you get toward the end of that program. Many times for continuing ed students, they'll elect to do the capstone, which is more of a research project as opposed to going out to a work site and doing an internship. Both of them are phenomenal opportunities to build some experience. Um, however, if you are coming into a major and you want to get into a career field where you have absolutely no experience, I would really encourage you to reach out to us and talk a little bit about that internship possibility and see whether or not that might be a fit for you, given your family situation and what your goals are. So you heard Dean Hurst talk about goals and the fact that you all have different paths that brought you here. I find with this continuing ed population, they're, they're very focused. They have very specific goals typically. So whether that's a goal to advance in your career field or if you're looking to change careers, or if you've been out of the workforce for six or seven years for whatever reason and you're getting back into the workforce, connect with us early on, tell us what your goals are, and we'll come up with a plan to help you to get there. We're not gonna get a job for you, but we're gonna try to give you all the pieces that you're gonna need to be successful getting the job that you want. Awesome. 
Thank you, Steve. So um, I did want to just encourage you, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw those up in the group chat so I can ask them. Um, I want to give it a minute here if anyone has questions that they can type those in um, for any of the, the support service departments. As well as I wanted to just make a request, if you happen to have in your name for your profile, if you have like an abbreviation or it just says iPhone or it's a nickname, if you could either uh, maybe shoot a message through the, the Zoom chat and just let us know your first and last name so that we can mark you down for attendance. That would be super helpful. There's a couple that we're trying to just make sure we mark you down as having attended, but we're struggling because we're not sure who it is. So if you have a second, that would be awesome. Um, so I'm gonna give it a second here and just see if we have any other questions at this time before we move on. So um, next up is um, a really cool opportunity. It's actually a pretty new uh, feature for Zoom and um, it's an opportunity for us to go ahead and put you in great breakout sessions. Um, so you have the opportunity to determine what um, breakout session you have most interest in, something that maybe you need more assistance with. You may have indicated that when you logged in, um, or you may be getting prompt for that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move into these breakout sessions, and that's really an opportunity for you to be um, put into smaller groups where you can talk about various topics that maybe you need more assistance with or you would like some more information on as we move towards the start of class. Please do not panic if you don't see a button to click or you're not put in a breakout session. We actually have the ability um, to move you into a session um, manually. So don't stress, we'll get with you and make sure you get where you need to be. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move forward towards that at this time so we can give you ample opportunity to chat with individuals in those breakout groups. <laughs> 